So I bought this. It's Noises, a VST instrument plugin produced by Audio Thing in collaboration with Heinbach. In this video, I will give you an overview of what it is and how it works. I will tell you why I bought it. I will suggest reasons why you might be interested in buying it, even if you are not into noises as such. And I will tell you how much I paid for it. As I bought it, I have no need to make a disclaimer about it. So I feel under no obligation to say nice things about it. You know the score, although I might. So Audio Thing is a music software developer, Heinbach. If you are watching this channel, then you are probably aware of Heinbach. You probably subscribe to his channel. He is a composer and a sound designer. He makes music out of the most amazing, rare and peculiar equipment imaginable. And one wall of his studio is filled with test equipment, which was actually used to create some of the sounds in this program. So let's start with an overview, not a full review or demonstration. Let's start with an overview of its features because I really like to show you how it works. Essentially, it's a sample playback device, but not as we know them, Jim. Apologies if you don't understand that reference. Live long and prosper. Or that one. Never mind. <laughs> Let us press on. I will leave some links in the description containing more details and a more in-depth description of noises if you want to check them out. But now I basically just want to show you how it works. So this is Noises and it's a VST instrument plugin. When you apply it to a track, you will instantly hear this. And that is the init patch. Now you can switch it on and off with this trigger button here. And there's a sync button here. So it will start when you play your door and stop when you stop it. And it will sync to your door's tempo. I am just going to use the trigger button for switching it on and off for convenience. So this is the default sound, the init patch. And it's not particularly exciting because it is only playing one audio source. Now to briefly explain how it works, the program contains a number of banks. More of that in a second. Each bank can contain up to eight audio sources. And this lovely dial here lets you move between the audio sources. I shall demonstrate. So if we switch, switch this back on, these switch on and off the eight different individual audio sources at the moment, all eight are on. So let's switch this on. You've only heard the first one so far. I will spin the dial. And back again, slightly faster. Okay, I'll just switch this off so it doesn't interfere with my chatter. Now, although it is fun, it would be quite awkward and time consuming to manually have to play it with this style. So the program can do it for you automatically using the trip section. There are two main controls. One is the speed control and the other is the fuzz control. And we look at these just in a little bit of detail because they are essential, I think, really to the operation of the software. So we switch it on with this little button here and we will switch on the sound. So what the speed control does, it moves the pointer for you forwards and backwards and you can say it's set at a pretty low setting uh, it's hit its peak now so it's going backwards it's going back fairly slowly and it is sweeping through all the audio files all eight of them so i'll just speed it up a little if i can 
So that speeded up a little bit. So you can adjust the speed at which the program morphs through these audio files. And it does morph, you will notice that there is not uh, a sharp change between them. You can reduce that if you want, but the essence, I think, of the program is that it creates this ever smooth, evolving morphing field between the different noise sources. Now, let's have a look at this fuzzy control. I've just switched this off to save your ears. So what the fuzzy control does, you'll see it's even though it's switched off, the uh, speed control is still working. So when the pointer gets in between two samples, you can see at the moment it's moving quite smoothly. But what the fuzzy control does, it moves it backwards and forwards by a certain percentage. So it's moving from the end of one sample to the beginning of another. I shall increase the fuzzy, the fuzziness. So you can see it's not moving quite as smoothly. It's moving well from one side to another. It's not erratic. It is controlled. Uh, it looks slightly erratic. And you can actually whop this up to a significant amount. And you want to know what it sounds like, of course. So it sounds like this. And you can hear the wows as it moves from one to another. This is an extreme fuzziness. And of course you can combine this with extreme speed. It's going mad. It's mad, I tell you. Okay, so there is a lot uh, you can do with just these two controls. Now, okay, so we've just been playing with one sound source. Now, before we get into the other sound sources, I'll just quickly run through the other controls because they are important, but I'm not going to spend a massive amount of time on them but just let you know how everything fits together and what everything does so these set the levels the input and the output levels this is a pitch control this has a massive effect on the sound i'll give you a well i'll give you a quick demonstration now with this weird sound whatever it is that's pretty extreme so let's drop the pitch so that, that is a major player I think in the sound design stakes next there are attack and release controls I'm not sure how much of an effect they have on noise but they are there you can play with those these are probably the two most interesting controls which control the dial i'm just switching the speed down a little bit these can also be applied to the filter this is the filter section there are low pass high pass band pass and notch filters cut off controls and resonance and there is a crusher section with bit reduction and a down sampling so they are the essential controls that you can use to change the sound now as electronic musicians if we think of noise we probably think of white noise and pink noise and brown noise and the other sort of noises which are produced by synthesizer but there are dozens and dozens and dozens of different types of noise noise from electric fans for example from airplanes from car engines field recordings motorway sounds so Heinbach has curated a set of banks to go with the program so there are 27 or 28 banks with the program you can also include your own banks you can make your own banks more of that in a second i have a couple of my own banks here somewhere but most of them are hang backs so you can select the bank just by clicking on it and that will change the sound depend on what's inside the bank Oh, 
that's nice. Okay. I'm getting carried away now. So you can not only just change the sound by changing the banks, but there are a massive number of presets as well. And they are arranged into categories, dozens and dozens of presets. Pick one at random. I'll just step through a couple. Interesting nighttime crickets sitting beside a massive electric transformer, perhaps. Yep. Okay, um, I hope you are listening to these in stereo because a lot of them have very pronounced stereo effects as well. So essentially that is noises and that's what it does and that's how it works. And using the sound banks, you have a massive range of noises to choose from. Now I said this was an overview, so I think that really completes it except for the dice function. Don't you just love programs with dice on them? So. I'm just going to put this back to play and click the dice a few times and we'll see what happens. Right. Very quiet. Oh, that's quite nice. Another quiet one, hum. So that's a lot of fun as well. You can just sit there and click the dice and see what happens. The presets, you can save your own presets. It's very, very easy to create your own presets. Okay, let's get back to the studio. So I said I would mention creating your own sound banks. This is very easy. It is something which actually attracted me to the program in the first place. You select a folder. I simply use the one containing the factory sound banks. Create your own folders inside that and put up to eight audio files inside. That's it. You can specify a custom location from within the program if you wish. So it makes noises. Now, I know a lot of people actually like sounds and programs like this. The Soma Lyra 8, for example, has a big following. Well, I don't know if it's big, but it has a very devoted following. If you like that sort of thing, then you probably have noises already. But if you prefer your music more on the tonal side, what can you do with it? Well, let me tell you why I bought it. Well, First of all, I actually like the user interface. I like the way it looks. Now, you might think that's a bit of a poor reason for buying a piece of software, but I think aesthetics are very important. And we had a little discussion about this when I mentioned the Grandmother Dark and Pastel colors. I will leave a link in the description and the card up there if you want to delve a little bit further into instrument aesthetics but i really like the way it looked it looks like a piece of heimbach's test equipment which obviously it was designed to be now when i was eight nine ten whatever i used to watch black and white horror movies with my dad on the tv they weren't particularly scary but i really loved the mad scientist laboratories with their massive dials and lights and levers and sparks flying all over the place and i just thought this was a magical world i'm sure there's a psychologist out there somewhere having a field day with this so that might partly explain my later interest in electronics and my 
ongoing interest in things with knobs and dials and sliders. Gosh, that sounds like a synthesizer, doesn't it? But the bottom line here is that I found the interface inspiring. And if you find something inspiring, you're more likely to use it and hopefully produce something good with it. Secondly, it was partly produced by Heinbach, so I was a little bit curious about exactly how he'd gone about it and what he had put in the instrument. That probably didn't play a massive part in the decision, but I guess if it had not been Heinbach behind this, I would not have been so interested. But possibly the main reasons for me buying it are the ways in it could potentially be used to create more tonal sounds probably sounds like one of these people if you give them a piece of equipment they will try to use it for something it was not designed to do that may well be the case now my experiments in this direction are still works in progress but i shall give you some of my thoughts about this so the first way of using this is simply to put down a layer of noise as the bed for an ambient track i'm quite interested in ambient music so I think this would be a super way to generate such a sound bed. I also wondered if it could be converted into a rhythm well yes of course it can or a melody or harmony now that I think is possibly slightly more difficult. You might use an envelope follower for example if you have a euro rack system you could pipe this into that. I think there are also envelope follower plugins for doors. Now, as noise is a, a vast range of frequencies, you could perhaps squash the frequencies, feed them through a quantizer and see what comes out. Another thing you could do is to run them through a series of effects such as filters, comb filters, delays. I have some of UJAM's finisher products which I bought in a Black Friday sale and haven't really explored them but I did try running some of the sounds through one of those and got quite encouraging results. So another idea is perhaps using this noise as a modulator to modulate another audio source. Using a vocoder for example you could use this noise as a modulator to modulate a pad carrier sound. I have no idea what it might sound like, but it sounds like an interesting experiment. So yes, one of the attractions of noises is that it could possibly be used to produce tonal material. So if you are of an experimental bent, then this is something which might interest you. So let's talk about price because I find this interesting as well. Now, noises I know is not going to be a mainstream item. I did watch the launch video that Heinbach did and at the time there was an intro price of he said 44 euros or dollars. I really don't like it when manufacturers quote a price which is the same for pounds, dollars and euros. There is a difference between currencies and I think people especially musicians are clever enough to know that so if you're being forced to pay in a higher currency than another one it is greatly unfair. End of rant. So this was an intro price for a few weeks and then it was supposed to revert to I think around 69 euros stroke dollars. Now, even at $44 or euros, I thought this really was too expensive and wasn't worth it. That was just my opinion. However, a few weeks ago, San GSC had a coupon for it. So I took advantage of that. I had a few shekels in my plugin boutique account. So bottom line, I paid 34 greater British pounds for it. So that's a reasonable price, I think. But I was thinking had this launched at $29 that would certainly have been an impulse purchase for me. Yes price really does play a major part in my purchase decisions. So I guess what I'm saying is I think it's probably worth around $29 rather than $69 and I'm sorry for saying that Heinrich. You of course may have a totally different opinion which is totally fine. Now just a few final comments. I am sure anyone who uses this or any piece of software for that matter will create a wish list of features they would like to see. 
Now, I am not too unhappy with it as it is. However, there is one biggie which I really, really hope they will include in a future update, and that is the ability to actually twiddle the knobs via MIDI control. As far as I'm aware at the moment, none of them respond to MIDI control messages. And wouldn't it be great to be able to put your hands on a MIDI controller and adjust the speed and the fuzz and even the big dial? So I think that is an essential feature they really ought to add. Although it's still quite fun clicking the buttons on the screen. So that's my overview and my thoughts about Heinrich's noises. If you have a copy, let me know what you think of it. If you don't have a copy, let me know if you are inclined to buy it or not. It's all good, whatever you decide. If you have enjoyed this video, and I hope you have, then please do consider subscribing to the channel and ringing the bell. Thank you. I'm not going to laugh. Oh. <laughs> oh. And please do click the big thumb. As always, I really do appreciate you spending time watching my videos, listening to my music and demonstrations. So for that, thank you very much indeed. I will see you again very soon in the next one.